So let's have a look at this last example. We have a function x cubed plus 3x plus 1. And we want to show that f has, oh, this should say has exactly. So we want to be even, be even more precise here. It has exactly one root in the interval negative 1 half to 0. And then once we know that there exists a root, in particular exactly one root, then we're going to try to approximate it. So why do we know it has exactly one root in the interval? Well, here's the thing. We've got this function, which is continuous. And let's look at the function value at the endpoint, because I'm hoping that one of them is going to be positive and one of them is going to be negative, so I can then conclude by the intermediate value theorem that there's a root between them. So what's happening at negative a half? That's negative a half cubed minus three halves plus one. So that's negative one eighth minus three halves plus one. Well, I already know negative three halves plus one. That's a negative number. And then I've got another negative one eighth. So I know that's negative. What about at zero? At zero, it's one. So that's positive. So we have that it's continuous on an interval. It's negative at one endpoint, positive at the other endpoint. So by the intermediate value theorem, f has at least one root in the interval negative one half to zero. We have at least one root. Okay, but we want to show that it has ex exactly one root. So what we're going to do is we're going to just suppose that there's more than one root. And we're going to try to get a contradiction. So towards a contradiction, in other words, we're going to try to Assume that there's more than one root, so assume there's two roots, and try to get some, something absurd, something that can actually be true, something impossible. And so then our assumption had to be incorrect. So towards a contradiction, suppose f has at least two roots. And we'll call them x1 and x2 in this interval negative one-half to zero. So suppose there's two roots. What can we say about these two roots? Well, what do we have? We have that f is continuous on um, the interval x1 to x2, actually including those endpoints. We know that f is differentiable on x1 to x2. And that information alone tells us that we can use the mean value theorem on this interval. In particular, maybe I'm, I'm using, really, I'm using Rolle's theorem here, but we'll phrase it as the mean value theorem. We know that f of x1 is equal to 0. f of x2 is equal to 0. So by the mean value theorem, or in particular Rolle's theorem, we have that there is a c, a value c, in the interval x1 to x2, which just happens to be a subinterval of negative 1 half to 0. So there's a c in the interval from negative 1 half to 0, such that, so, so that, f prime of c is f of x2 minus f of x1 all over x2 minus x1. But f of x2 and f of x1 were both equal to 0. So there's a place where the derivative is 0. So all this so far was just to say, suppose I have two roots on the interval negative 1 half to 0, which we've called x1 and x2. So I know the function has to pass through those two points then there has to be a place in between them where the derivative is 0. Uh, maybe something like that. Who knows? But there is a place, by the mean value theorem, there has to be a place where the derivative is 0. So that's what we called c. OK, so we have to have a place where the derivative is 0 on this interval if it has at least two roots. But is there a place where the derivative is 0? Let's note that the derivative is 3x squared plus 3. So f prime of c equals 0 
means what? Well, it means that 3c squared plus 3 is 0. Or in other words, c squared is negative 1. So this place where the derivative is 0 has to be at a number c whose square is negative 1. But there is no such c. No such c exists. There is no real number whose square is negative 1. So this is impossible. It's impossible that there's a place where the derivative is 0. And that stemmed from our assumption. What was our assumption? We supposed that f had at least two roots. And from that, we got something that was impossible. So our assumption had to be wrong. f cannot have at least two roots. But we already know that it has at least one root. So it has at least one root. It can't have two or more roots, so it has to have exactly one root. So those two bits of information together tell us that therefore f has exactly one root on the interval negative one half to zero. We are guaranteed the existence of a root by the intermediate value theorem and we managed to show there couldn't be two or more roots by the mean value theorem. So we have exactly one root. Now the next part of the question says, okay, you now know there is a root, try to approximate it. So this means we're going to need to use Newton's method. So x cubed plus 3x plus 1 is our function. Our derivative is 3x squared plus 3. Our Newton's iterative formula is going to be xn plus 1 is equal to xn minus f of xn all over f of x f prime of xn. And so in this case, it's xn minus xn cubed plus 3xn plus 1 all over 3xn squared plus 3. So that's our Newton's iterative formula. We just need a good initial guess now, and then we just need to start iterating. So what should our initial guess be? Well, we're on the interval negative one half to zero, so maybe I'll just take one of the endpoints. Maybe I'll take zero to be our initial guess. And so x2, well I can pop that in and I get negative one third coming out of iter the iterative formula. Putting zero in for xn, I get negative a third out. And then I take that and I plug it in. And at this point I'm just going to use the computer to do the rest of these iterations. And so I use the computer to start cranking out all these iterations, and I get these values. And we were asked to stop when our iterations agreed to two decimal places, and we see here that this iteration has two decimal places, three and two, and this next one agrees to it. So these agree to two decimal places. And so the root is approximately negative 0.32. Okay, that's it for this section. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you again next time.